Hey, good friends. Thanks for joining me today. I got a good one for you. This one is about fragrances that are expensive, but worth it. Before we get started, I have a question for you. If you don't mind sharing, drop in the comments, what is the price point past which for you? That's expensive. <laughs> That phrase comes from Kathleen Lights, who is a makeup YouTuber, and she jokes around about expensive makeup by saying, that's expensive. But for you, at what point, you know, you're scrolling online, you're looking for that fragrance that you think you might love, or heck, you're in store at the counter, and the sales associate says, a full bottle of this is going to run you fill in the blank dollars. What is that dollar amount for you? I know, generally speaking, it is tacky to talk about money. I get it. In normal day-to-day -day life, there's three things that I really avoid talking about, especially in mixed company and especially around my good friends and family because it can get heated. Money, politics, and religion. So here we're talking about money. <laughs> However, let's get real. Fragrance collecting, if you consider yourself doing that, is not an inexpensive hobby. We have tons and tons of videos out here about expensive fragrances, about affordable fragrances, and everything in between. Of course, we have a right to talk about that in these videos. So excuse me if it feels impolite to ask the question. I get it. And you don't have to answer it. But if you're comfortable, let me know. I'm going to tell you for the purposes of this video, I had some criteria that were really important for me to follow. Otherwise, I probably could have listed numerous fragrances and gone on and on and on for hours about expensive fragrances that are worth the money. So I had to narrow the criteria and I did it in my trusty fragrance notebook here. <laughs> there were six criteria for this video. One, for me, that price point past which I start to go, do I really want this? Do I want to drop that kind of money on a bottle of smelly water? It's about in the 225 to 250 range. At that point, I'm like, I could probably buy a nice pair of boots with that or a certain kind of purse or whatever, you know? Okay. And what I'm talking about at that price point is it has to be for a hundred milliliter bottle. Okay. Like a full size bottle. And then number two, it has to last for at least six hours or more. Nothing as disappointing as buying a fragrance that you really love and you put down a chunk of change and it's gone in 30 minutes. We don't have time for that. Three, it needs to be able to be smelled within at least a two to three foot radius from the person. So there are some fragrances that are really, really beautiful and expensive, and you really have to be like up on the person's skin to be able to smell the fragrance. There's nothing wrong with that, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna give you all some projection. So we're talking about a two to three foot radius. Think about maybe the length of your arm or so. People are in your scent bubble. Number four, it cannot be a discontinued fragrance. I want you to be able to get your hands on these if you're interested in checking them out. And along the same lines, number five, it can't be impossible to find. So when I'm talking about not impossible to find, I really have to think about the viewers in the United States. I want to say a special shout out and hi to all of my international viewers. Mwah, love you guys too. However, the majority of my viewer base is in the U.S. And so from that perspective, the fragrance needs to be easy to find here in the U.S. You need to be able to Google it and find a U.S. retailer or discounter that sells the fragrance readily. And then six, I only chose one per house of the 10 that I'm going to talk about. I thought that was only fair rather than give two and three and maybe four slots to one particular house that I just happen to love or another house. So those are the six criteria. Let's get to talking about these 10 fragrances that I selected. Let me just say I scoured through my entire collection as well as through all of the samples that I've tried, all of the travel sprays that I've tried throughout the years. So I'm bringing you 10 that are a wide variety across the collection or that I've tried in the past, including a couple that I hope to pick up soon. Ooh, that was a long intro. Let's go. Let's kick off the top 10 with a fragrance that is, in my opinion, even better than one that it smells like. The one that gets talked about in every single video across, maybe not every single one, but a lot of videos across YouTube. The all famous now Baccarat Rouge 540 and the fragrance I am going to share with you, in my opinion, is even better. And it is from Electimus and it's called Trejan. Y'all, let me tell you, this is very much in the spirit of Baccarat Rouge 540. However, in the entrance at the top, you get beautiful citrus along with the saffron and that like spun airiness 
that is the Baccarat Rouge 540 trademark, that sort of ethereal yet woody, yet ambery and spicy and sweet all at the same time, really light sort of cloudy wispy thing that that fragrance has going on is also like the signature thing in here, as well as some citrus at the top. And this fragrance is super long lasting. You spray this on in the morning, it'll take you probably through midnight <laughs> and has a really great projection. Now I said two to three feet, this one can be smelled in the room if you spray heavily. So I would suggest spraying lightly depending on the effect that you're going for. So this is a fabulous one. I do like the bottle as well, heavy, substantial bottle. You know, it's a statement kind of fragrance. It's just beautiful. You're gonna have presents coming in the room. People are gonna smell you and want to know what you're wearing. Gorgeous, absolutely worth every penny, Trajan. Then we'll go to one of my favorite, if not the favorite rose in my collection. I'm not the biggest rose lover. I do have a nice handful of rose fragrances. This one being probably in top place, if not very close to that tied with another or two, Initio's Atomic Rose. This is my first Initio fragrance and it got me super interested in the house. I now own several more and probably will continue to buy. I haven't had a stinker in the bunch. So this is uh, very much in the direction of Delina and Delina Exclusive. I feel like it's more like Delina Exclusive than the original Delina, which is a little bit sharp for my personal taste. I find this to be a gorgeous, really soft, almost powdery rose. And I say almost because I wouldn't call this a powdery fragrance, but there's like this powdery nuance that surrounds a beautiful, fresh rose. Vanilla's in this uh, fragrance as well as hedion there's a touch of citrus but more than anything it's a beautiful really intoxicating rose fragrance and for those of you that love beast mode fragrances here you go <laughs> another one that just goes and goes and goes all day long and has a lot of oomph and presence in a room you will be smelled when you're wearing this fragrance it is slightly different from the delina's Enough so that if you have those, you can have this as well, but definitely worth every penny in my opinion. I come next to a fragrance that I would wear if I were renewing my marriage vows and that I would say is a great wedding day fragrance for a bride that wants to be smelled by her guests. And everybody knows she's the queen of the party. She is the, the belle of the ball. It is a Cento Overdose from Zerzhov. First of all, the bottle is just magnificent. One of the prettiest ones in my collection. When I smell it, it makes me a little bit weak in the knees. And the more it sits on my shelves, the better and better it gets. When I first smelled this, when I first sprayed it, it has a greenness to it that can be slightly off-putting if you're expecting a really feminine floral fragrance. However, that greenness comes to, as the fragrance starts to develop, the greenness begins to accompany some of the most beautiful white floral notes that I have among my entire collection, including a beautiful jasmine note. It has fruity touches. So the fruity accord in here is supposed to be one of the most prominent, but in my opinion, the fruit is a supporting actor to that beautiful white floral here with the green touches and with these, I wouldn't say soapy aldehydes, I would just say clean, like a clean vibe in the background. Imagine like a freshly scrubbed white wall in the Mediterranean somewhere with a beautiful burst of white florals and a touch of greenness from a nearby garden and some sweetness in the air from a fruit bowl. <laughs> something like that. And it's just beautiful. It's a dreamy fragrance. Another one that's a super powerhouse will project far, will get you noticed and will last a very, very long time. I think this is probably one of the top florals in my collection. In fact, I'm so looking forward to doing an updated power florals or spring kind of fragrances video or videos as we move into the warmer months here, because this is going to begin to make an appearance again. However, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous year-round fragrance. If you want to smell that beautiful feminine power fragrance in the wintertime, in the cold dead of winter too, this is one that can certainly stand up to any cold weather. Absolutely fantastic fragrance. Now allow me to introduce you to another gold bottle that is a favorite of mine. This is Tibet from Tiziana Terenzi. Woo! <laughs> powerhouse, powerhouse fragrance for the dead of summer. Again, another year-round fragrance, but I associate it 
with summer. Now I don't do well with peach, but here it is beautiful and soft and that nice like fuzzy, really ripe Georgia peach touch. However, it doesn't overpower the composition. It's accompanied by musk, this really sweet, airy, almost cotton candy-esque accord. It has a touch of coconut. It has a little bit of beachiness and some general fruity floralness happening. It's a really difficult fragrance to describe except to say, gosh, it's sexy, like summertime, evening, va va voom, bring your best feminine self, bring all of your feminine wiles to bear on whatever's about to happen for the night. <laughs> I have to say, I didn't love this when I first sampled it. I thought it was nice, but a little bit weird. However, it's one of those fragrances that develops on skin and becomes rather mesmerizing after a while. This fragrance is loved by my husband. It's definitely like one of those date night fragrances that's fantastic year round, but especially in the late spring into very late summer really is when this one blossoms the most in my opinion and shines the most this next fragrance i don't really hear anyone talking about at all and they really should it's a beautiful fragrance maybe not traditional for women's channels women's fragrance channels at all but gosh i love this so much you heard about this in a recent video that i filmed about my husband's top 10 fragrances go check that out it's a fun video i'm a little obnoxious in that video with a lot of air horns so grab a glass of wine or something like that before you go watch it. But it is from Sense of Wood and it is Cedar in Acacia. So we have three Sense of Wood fragrances between my husband and I and have smaller travel sprays of a few others. So our top favorites are this one, Sandalwood and Oak and Oak in Oak is part of his top 10 along with this one. I just adore this and it's such a difficult fragrance for me to describe. It's fresh, it's sprightly, it's got a little pep in its step. There's almost like a cedar wood kind of smell here, along with, if you look at the website, it tells you that there's ginger and cypriot oil. I swear that I smell <laughs> the equivalent of some kitchen spices. I couldn't tell you what those are, something in the time direction. Yes, this does lean a little bit masculine, that never bothers me but I enjoy wearing this fragrance because it takes me away. It's like the combination of being, if you've been in a spa and you think about the way that the wood in a spa smells, if you've smelled Hinoki wood, there's something really fresh and interesting about that. A, a lot of that sort of fresh woodiness is captured in this fragrance, along with a touch of powderiness. There's no musk in here, but you get sort of the sensation of musk when you smell this. And just a fresh spa-like smell that I think is just fabulous all year round. And especially in warm to cool weather, maybe not the coldest of weather, although I'd wear it then too. Maybe not the dead of summer, although I'd wear it then, then too. But more so those in-between stages, I think, is where this fragrance really shines. I love that on the website, you can pick the color of the body of the fragrance. You can pick this creamy color or brown or black. And you can also pick, if I remember correctly, gold or silver hardware or maybe even black. I don't remember. But anyway, Sense of Wood is definitely one of those undersung houses that's great to check out. There was a little bit of buzz about Sense of Wood when it well, did it launch at that time? But I don't know, maybe like two years ago or so there was buzz and there needs to be more. It's a really fantastic house with some fabulous offerings. Let me go on. One of my favorite houses because of the aesthetic, I enjoy the bottles and I enjoy the way that they are named is Bond Number no. 9. This is Tribeca. All of the bottles from Bond Number no. 9 have this star shape. They all have sort of a different design on the actual bottle and they each represent a street or a neighborhood in New York, which I, well, most of them do, which I absolutely adore. So this is Tribeca, one that I had had a hard time finding because you know, I buy my fragrances on discount and this was a really difficult one to track down at a price point that was below the one that I mentioned at the top of this video. Absolutely fantastic gourmand notes plus floral plus woody here. Caramel, <laughs> hazelnut, woodiness, jasmine. It's just like a divine concoction. I I don't know what else to say other than this is sweet and feminine and beautiful and has some woodiness to balance it out from being like too overly in the heavy girly direction. 
a beautiful, mature gourmand for, again, all year round, but particularly reminds me of those beautiful, sweet, fun scents that we bring out in the fall that have some woodiness or some spiciness and some depth to them as it starts to get colder. But this is sort of on the more fun side of those. And at the same time is a mature, a mature gourmand. Gorgeous. I just, I love it very much. I love it very much. And you know, there's got to be at least one Tom Ford here. And this one was, was hard to decide. I have I have a lot of Tom Fords that I really enjoy. Not all, there've been some stinkers from Tom Ford or some meh fragrances that just didn't do it for me. But this one here, it's worth every penny at the retail price, Santal Blush. For me, this is one of the most exquisite sandalwoods that I've had the opportunity to try. A beautiful, true sandalwood fragrance with spices. There's a hint of like a resinous touch in here, some woodiness aside from sandalwood. Like sandalwood is a very specific smell. Yes, I know it's in the woody family, but this has also other woody touches aside from that. And one that my husband and I share alike, this one showed up in his top 10 as well. And it does sit on his shelf, but I spritz this <laughs> quite a bit, particularly in the evenings as I'm settling in. There's something so warm and cozy and enveloping about this, but at the same time, rather stately and distinguished. Like it has that distinguished gentleman vibe, vibe and also that distinguished woman vibe at the same time. It's both. It's all of that. It's androgynous that way, my friends. And like I said, worth every penny at retail. I purchased this when Sephora has the 20% off sale which is twice a year. They have one in the spring and one in the fall. But listen, if you like sandalwood, this is the one. This is the one. This next one is also a statement fragrance that will have you standing out from the crowd. It's not one that's really popular in the fragrance community. I can understand why, because it's a little bit on the bizarre side, but man, is it beautiful in my opinion. It is BDK's Tabac Rose. How would I describe this fragrance? Mostly rose, tobacco, there's chocolate here as a supporting actor and patchouli. That's what I pick up. Those four notes the most heavy on the tobacco and definitely heavy on a vintage rose. So what do I mean by vintage rose? Now, <laughs> hang with me here. When I think of vintage rose, I think of something that's in the potpourri direction. And usually I don't want to smell like potpourri, but how it is in here accompanied by those other notes is like near perfection. It just works. It's sultry. It's a little mysterious. This is another fragrance that's going to have you sort of commanding whatever corner of the room you're in. You're not going to smell like anyone else because no one's going to dare to wear this except you. It definitely has a lot of projection, longevity, presence. And, you know, it's a rather commanding fragrance is how I, I would describe this. So the woman or man with confidence, confidence needs to be the one wearing this. I would absolutely not suggest wearing this fragrance casually. This is not the run errands fragrance. <laughs> this is the dress up and have a night out on the town and command the room kind of fragrance. Really fantastic. The ninth fragrance is one that is a little bit softer on the projection, but is definitely noticeable and has really great longevity. It's Gentle Fluidity Gold by Maison Francis Kirkjean. I love that this fragrance is at the same time, a warm, spicy fragrance, but also just a delicate, everyday kind of fragrance that you can wear to the office. In fact, I wore this to a team meeting. Shocker, because usually I go for something light, like Clean Reserve Skin or one of those kinds of fragrances that's just a, a soft, very close to the skin, body, musk kind of thing. But I wore the Dupe for Gentle Fluidity Gold. It was the dead of winter in Chicago with the winds blowing and, you know, like, almost close to zero degree temperature. And it, it did so well, the dupe did. And I know that the original does well as also because I've had a travel spray of that. So I think I'll probably pick up the original and sell off the dupe soon. So I love that this sits onto the skin and it performs well on clothes too. It smells so beautiful on clothes and warms up even more on skin to reveal like this muskiness about it. And the spices I think come out more on skin but beautiful vanilla, amber, spices, a little touch of woodiness, and just gorgeous, just gorgeous. A really versatile vanilla that you can wear from morning, like I said, going into an office meeting and take it through the night to date night or even uh, special occasion parties if you so choose to be that sort of feminine, soft, beautiful energy. Love this. 
And the last fragrance is one that really surprised me from Frederick Mall. I had a sample set of it and particularly fell in love with this one. I do like the original Musk Ravageur. I do like Carnal Flower, and those are certainly worthy of full price as well. Great, expensive, beautiful fragrances. But the one I'd like to feature that's not talked about as often is Iris Poudre. Gosh, what a gorgeous, lovely, really clean iris, musk, sandalwood fragrance. It has oomph and power while at the same time being soft, demure, uh, really soft around all of the edges, nothing sharp in this fragrance, nothing off-putting. I can't imagine anyone being offended by this. And it's one of those fragrances that you would put on when you want to feel like your most peaceful divine self. I really like this fragrance a lot, have been waiting to see it on significant discount before I pick it up because the full retail price is pricey, my friends, <laughs> which is the theme of the video. But I think this is one of the unsung beauties of the Frederick Mall lineup and more so to me than Portrait of a Lady, you know, by far, I, Portrait of a Lady, well, I had some thoughts about Portrait of a Lady, but I know a lot of people love it, so I'm going to leave that alone. This one here, I think really deserves a lot more praise and shine for the beauty that it is. I have other iris fragrances that I really enjoy quite a lot. So I'm not sort of in a rush to go get iris poudre, but let me tell you, if I find that one on a nice sale, I'm grabbing a bottle. Let me know what you think about these 10 fragrances. I wanted to bring you some variety across different houses and across different olfactive families. Hope you enjoyed the selection. Happy to hear your thoughts, share in the comments, both that price point, you know, past which you're like scratching your head, wondering if you want to bother investing, excuse me, not investing because fragrances are not investments. We got to stop saying that y'all. There's nothing about a fragrance that's an investment. It's something you spend your money on, a frivolity that's nice to have. We don't need fragrances, right? And they certainly, well, most of them, the vast majority of fragrances do not appreciate in price, which is what an investment is, right? Get off your soapbox, Veronica. So that price point past which you probably are going to scratch your head about spending money on it and which fragrances are expensive that you think are really, really worth the money. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Take care, my friends.